Today, I have two letters that have made the news in the last couple of days. One aimed at the Pope, and the other aimed at we the laity. Both call for penance for the acts of idol worship we saw in the Vatican Gardens this past October. Packy Mommy is a story that, you know, just won't go away, and for good reason. We live in truly dark days when we see a supposed Roman pontiff observing the worship of pagan idols in the Temple of God and does literally nothing about it, and even worse, apologizes to the idolaters for the acts of brave Catholic men who later rid the Temple of God of those same idols. No apologies to the lady have been offered from Francis and crew, and that's not surprising at this point. These letters are worth reading in their entirety to get the point being made. I'll have their text up on the source blog, which is linked in the description of this podcast, in case you want to read it for yourself. The letter addressed to the lady includes prayers, prayers at the end that I'll not be reading here, but we'll have up on the blog for those interested. The first is the letter signed by more than 100 priests, now including Archbishop Vigano, and it demands penance. The se- second is the letter to the lady. After those letters, I'll offer some thoughts of my own. Protest against Pope Francis's sacrilegious acts. We, the undersigned Catholic clergy and lay scholars, protest against and condemn the sacrilegious and superstitious acts committed by Pope Francis, the successor of Peter, in connection with the re- recent Amazon Synod held in Rome. The sacrilegious acts are as follows. On October 4th, Pope Francis attended an act of idolatrous worship of the pagan goddess Pachymami. He allowed this worship to take place in the Vatican Gardens, thus desecrating the vicinity of the graves of the martyrs and of the Church of the Apostle Peter. He participated in this act of idolatrous worship by blessing a wooden image of Pachymami. October 7th, the idol of Pachymami was placed in front of the main altar at St. Peter's and then carried in procession to the Synod Hall. Pope Francis said prayers in a ceremony involving this image and then joined in this procession. When wooden images of this pagan deity were removed from the church of Santa Maria in Transpontina, where they had been sacrilegiously placed and thrown into the Tiber by Catholics outraged by this profanation of the church, Pope Francis on October 25th apologized for their removal and another wooden image of Pachymami was returned to the church. Thus, a new profanation was initiated. On October 27th, in the closing Mass for the Synod, he accepted a bowl used in the idolatrous worship of Pachymami and placed it on the altar. Pope Francis himself confirmed that these wooden images were pagan idols. In his apology for the removal of these idols from a Catholic church, he specifically called them Pachymami, a name for a false goddess of Mother Earth, according to pagan religious belief in South America. Different features of these proceedings have been condemned as idolatrous or sacrilegious by Cardinal Walter Brandmuller, Cardinal Gerhard Muller, Cardinal Jorge Urosa Savino, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, Bishop Athanasius Schneider, Bishop Jose Luis Azcona Hermosa, Bishop Rudolfo Voderholzer, and Bishop Marian Eleganti. Lastly, Cardinal Raymond Burke has given the same assessment of this cult in an interview. The participation in idolatry was part- was anticipated by the statement entitled Document on Human Fraternity, signed by Pope Francis and Ahmad Al-Tayyib, the Grand Imam of Al-Azhar Mosque, on February 4th, 2019. This statement asserted that, quote, the pluralism and the diversity of religions, color, sex, race, and language are, are willed by God in his wisdom, through which he created human beings. This divine wisdom is the source from the right to freedom of belief and the freedom to be different derives. End quote. Pope Francis's involvement in idolatrous ceremonies is an indication that he meant this statement in a heterodox sense, which allows pagan worship of idols to be considered a good positively willed by God. Moreover, despite privately advising Bishop Athanasius Schneider that, quote, you, the bishop, can say that the phrase in question on the diversity of religions means a permissive will of God, end quote, Francis has never corrected the Abu Dhabi statement accordingly. In his subsequent audience address on April 3rd, 2019, Francis answering the question, why does God permit that there are so many religions, referred in passing to the permissive will of God, as explained by scholastic theology gave the concept a positive meaning, declaring that God wanted to permit this because while there are so many religions, they always look to heaven, they look to God. 
There is not the slightest suggestion that God permits the existence of false religions in the same way. He permits the existence of evil generally. Rather, the clear implication is that God permits the existence of so many religions because they are good, that they always look to heaven, that they look to God. Worse, Pope Francis has since confirmed the uncorrected Abu Dhabi statement by establishing an interfaith committee, which later received the official name of a higher committee, located in the United Arab Emirates, to promote the goals of the document, and promoting a directive issued by the Pontifical Council for Interreligious Dialogue, addressed to the heads of all the Roman Catholic Institutes of Higher Studies, and indirectly to Catholic University professors, asking that they give the widest possible dissemination to the document, including its uncorrected assertion that God wills the diversity of religions, just as he wills the diversity of color, sex, race, and language. The rendering of worship to anyone or anything other than the one true God, the Blessed Trinity, is a violation of the First Commandment. Absolutely all participation in any form of the veneration of idols is condemned by this commandment, and is an objectively grave sin, independently of the subjective culpability that only God can judge. St. Paul taught the early church that the sacrifice offered to pagan idols was not offered to God, but rather to demons, when he said in his first letter to the Corinthians, What then? Do I say that what is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything? Or that the idol is anything? But the things which the heathen sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. I would not that you should be made partakers with demons. You cannot drink the chalice of the Lord and the chalice of demons. You cannot be partakers of the table of the Lord and of the table of demons. See 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 19 to 21. By these actions, Pope Francis has incurred the reproach uttered by the Second Council of Nicaea. Quote, Many pastors have destroyed my vine, they have defiled my portion, for they followed unholy men, and, trusting to their own frenzies, they calumniated the Holy Church, which Christ our God has espoused to himself, and they failed to distinguish the holy from the profane, asserting that the icons of our Lord and of his saints were no different from the wooden images of satanic idols. With immense sorrow and deep love for the chair of Peter, we beg Almighty God to spare the guilty members of his church on earth a punishment that they deserve for these terrible sins. We respectfully ask Pope Francis to repent publicly and unambiguously of these objectively grave sins and of all the public offenses that he has committed against God and the true religion, and to make reparation for these offenses. We respectfully ask all the bishops of the Catholic Church to offer fraternal correction to Pope Francis for these scandals and to warn their flocks that according to the divinely revealed teaching of the Catholic faith, they will risk eternal damnation if they follow the present examples of offending against the first commandment. Signed on the 9th of November, 2019, In Festo Dedicationis Basilicae Laternalidis. And there is a list of signers. It's over a hundred people long at this point. The second letter is shorter. It is written by four anonymous exorcists who are asking the laity for acts of reparation. They were requested to remain anonymous for numerous reasons. The following is the full statement of the four exorcists. Again, the prayers that follow are available on the uh, sources blog for you to read for yourself. In light of recent events regarding the Pachimami ritual in the Vatican Gardens, the subsequent procession of the idol into St. Peter's, as well as the placing the idols in St. Maria and Transpontina Church, we are reminded of the words of St. Paul in 1 Corinthians 10.20. Quote, Do I say that what is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything, or that the idol is anything? But the things which the heathen sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. I would not that you should be made partakers with devils. End quote. The Psalms, 95.5, tell us that all the gods of the Gentiles are devils, but the Lord made the heavens. These events bring home the reality that, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, our wrestling is not against the flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the world of this darkness, against the spirits of wickedness in the high places. These events bring home the reality that we are in spiritual warfare, and that warfare is happening within the church itself. We are therefore encouraging all Catholics who recognize the evil of the events to join us in a day of prayer and penance on December 6th for the purpose of driving out any diabolic influence within the Church that has been gained as a result of these recent events, along with any other events. 
we're asking all those who participate to do the following for this intention. One, say the rosary. Two, take on some form of penance, such as fasting, abstinence, and other forms of mortification. Three, to offer the prayers to the Sacred Heart, as seen below. Other recommenda recommended acts which, in which we encourage others to do for this intention is make a holy hour in front of the Blessed Sacrament and attend Mass that day, offering the Mass of the Merits for this in intention. May the Divine Mercy rest upon all of us. So there you have it. Penance by members of the clergy has been called for, and everyone from you and I and the laity to the highest levels of the hierarchy have been asked to participate in this. I will do my best to remind people as we get closer to December 6th to participate. Like I said, the prayers mentioned in the second shorter letter are on the source's blog, returntotradition.org, which is linked in the description below. It should be the top link. Anyway, penance is obviously and clearly needed, for I can't imagine that these sins will go unpunished unless acts of penance and reparation are made. While many would probably enjoy watching the wrath of God come down upon Francis and his cabal, if you take Catholic prophecy at all seriously, then the wrath of God that we expect it isn't only going to include him, but will include many, if not all, members of this audience and myself, good or bad, recalling to mind that warning of fire falling from the sky from the original Akita apparition. And of course, praying for sinners to repent is kind of central to the Catholic faith, including people we don't like. So December 6th, is the date for the acts of penance, and I, again, will do my best to remind people as that date approaches. Thank you for listening, and keep praying for the Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.